you know, over the period of, I don't know, what time. But the speaker has tried to um, go through many of what we call experiential sensational emotional episodes or moments of life the speaker is very fortunate to have been a part of something unexplainable something mysterious It is the opportunity to, it has had the opportunity and is still having the opportunity to, to explore, to explore something that is much more deep, much more profound than working out, things like gravity or the telephone or the Big Bang. Because we're not here to explore that what is possible. We're here to explore the impossible. And through the impossible, you'll see that there is something like some big magnet pulling you. You are an iron filing, but this magnet is infinite. You will never reach it, but it's always pulling and pushing. It's giving, it's giving whatever I am life. It's giving whatever I am death. It's giving whatever I am birth. But the greatest discovery is to realize that that what I am is not that what I am. And to know that what I am is not that what I am. It's what we call in our mind, our mind thinking mechanism, um, liberation, freedom. Enlightenment is a, another concept from the mind, as is every other, th every other thing, a thought, an imagination, a fantasy, an experience, what we call a real event, simply a concept, simply another idea that the mind can do cartwheels, that the mind is a magician, that the mind thinks that everyone will recognize it as God. Each one of us gets the opportunity to explore the minuscule things, but also the major things. And the major thing is the minuscule thing. And the minuscule thing is sometimes they become the major things. There's not a right way or a wrong way. Religion is neither good nor bad. Science is neither proving nor disproving. When you see that death is just another fallacy, another belief, another thought from the mind, just mind builds it up to die. You see, mind builds itself up to die. The body builds itself up to die. But it's just a transition. It's just a when you scatter the ashes of your loved one, yeah, and the wind takes hold of it, and someone says to you five years later, go pick up the ashes of your loved one. I don't know where they are. They've gone. They've disappeared. But they haven't disappeared, have they? <laughs> They've just went home. The mind is such a, a, a conceptual, a, a 
cunning, an incredibly gifted thinking mechanism to make it believe that it is you. You go through, the speaker has the opportunity to go through awakening, to go through this completely egoistic life, to begin as a child, to begin pure, to begin perfect, and then turn into this egoistic maniac, this up and down fluctuating, um, believing and disbelieving, attaching and detaching and associating and non-associating and hoping and desiring and needing and wanting. Foolish game, you see. That's a, this is the this is the ego game, the mind game. And then it's, it suddenly says, I don't want any of this. And it's taken to the other side of the game. That pure, tranquil, enlightenment, awakening. Pure, diluted, undiluted consciousness game. That emptiness, that nothingness, that non-duality. And it realizes that there it is bliss, but it's still not participating as what it's supposed to be. So the ego calls it back in and says, no, no, let's start again. Now we've tasted both sides, where can you go? And then truth arises. The speaker cannot divulge truth because it does not have that mechanism, that tools. This vessel can only divulge what it has been conditioned into divulging because the mechanism of you and the listening can only take on board what it is conditioned to take on board. So therefore we are stuck with a mind of human until you realize that something inside says, no, there's more, there is more. But this more is less. And when you discover the less, you'll discover something very, very pure. So the speaker had the opportunity to be in the middle, to be centered like Buddha, and to not know whether it was here or not here, whether it was alive or dead, whether this was real or unreal, whether this was imaginary or <coughs> taking place. You go through that everything is happening, ego state, then nothing is happening, non-dual state, and then you're stuck in the middle. And in one moment, in the forest, in the trees, the tree you speak. You say everything is the same, everything is the same one moment, and the trees, or whatever it is, <coughs> God, consciousness, higher self, spirit, no, only one moment. And then you're shocked out of this. You're shocked out of death, and you're shocked out of life. You're shocked out of I. You've been either given the freedom to not come back or you're being punished and you won't get back. But the mind wants to make, take a side, wants to make something out of it, wants to pull you back out of this one moment. No, I'm representing you. You need to come back. So you come back. And what you say is, now I have choices. Now I have a new mind. Now I am reborn. But I still don't know who I am. I still don't know what I am. I still don't know what God is. I still don't know what life is. I still don't know what death is. I still don't know what consciousness is. I still don't know what the universe is. I still don't know what spirit is. I still don't know what soul is. Because you've only tasted each one of these things. You cannot know any of these things fully. until you stay in this one moment. Ram Das calls it, be here now. Eckhart Tolle calls it the power of now. I call it hereness. To explore one moment is all that remains. Enlightenment, gone. 
ego body. Enlightenment, back. Ego, back. Death, burn. Life, burn. Death, back. Life, back. These things, they come and go. And our mind tells us this every day. One minute I feel as if I'm going to die next meal. minute I feel as if I want to live. That's the breath. And this mind will keep fluctuating, keep you coming and going. Keep the thoughts coming and going. But the idea is to stay in the one moment. Not stay as presence. You can't stay as presence. You cannot stay as awareness. That's what you are. You don't have to stay. That's what's taking place. can only explore. As Jiddu Krishnamurti explored every day of his life until his body passed and still exploring. Because this one moment is not what we think it is. It's not a side. It's not a pulse. It's not a non-pulse. It's not life. It's not death. It's not anything less, anything more. You see? Your human mind cannot explore anything that has no individual sides. It has to be either this or that. And it cannot be, okay, it's nothing, but nothing has an opposite, nothing and something. So you develop your mind. You develop a new mind. You've tasted both sides and you develop this mind. And you cannot share with anyone this mind unless they have the same quality of mind. This mind is beyond I. This mind is beyond this experience. Because the one moment is neither timeless nor in time. Can you find the beginning of Om and the end? Of course we can because we can only breathe so long. This Om has no beginning and no end. It's a vibration of love. So you're focusing on this vibration of love. This vibration of love is neither in nor out. Neither up nor down. It's like the hokey cokey. In, out, in, out, shake it all about. But there's no one doing the hokey cokey. There's no hokey cokey. There's no dancer. There's no liver. There's no lover. There's no beer. There's no non beer. There's just something that is extraordinarily, extraordinarily impossible to get hold of. The magnet is getting closer. When something wants to pull you to the end, It'll pull you to the end. But in the end will be the beginning. The beginning of something else. Something new. Something better than this. Not better, but something different from this human life. Something different from this human death. There is only one moment. It is neither this nor that. So you cannot, you cannot finish like... That what is. Someone wants a finish. That what is what? That what is. So you cannot say one moment is nothing. Because of nothing is an opposite. You cannot say one moment is something. You cannot say one moment is life. You cannot say one moment is death. You can only say one moment is. One moment truly is. To explore for the rest of this body life, this one moment. Go deep within this core of this moment. Fall, keep falling, keep subsiding. 
enlightenment is just a flicker. God's voice, just a flicker. The door opening, a flicker. Life, a flicker. Death, a flicker. Birth, a flicker. The universe, a flicker. This body, a flicker. Love, a flicker. Where do all these flickers arise? Where is this fire? Where is this belly? Where is this truth? Within the one moment. I leave you now. In this moment. I don't know for a period of time. Who knows what's going to happen in this next moment. 